the increasing geometric sequence x0, x1, x2, and so on consists entirely of integral powers of 3, integer powers of 3. So we know x0 can be written as 3 to some integer power, who knows, like negative 15. And we know this is a geometric sequence. So x1 may be 3 to the negative 10, x2 may be 3 to the negative 5, and so on. So in this case, the common ratio is 3 to the fifth. And of course, this is an example that's not obviously necessarily going to be the sequence that we care about, but I wanted to make sure we know what's going on. And whenever we have a geometric sequence, the two things we want to pay attention to is the first term and the common ratio and the common ratio r. And in this case, we know every single term is going to be integer power of 3. So we know the first term can be written as 3 to some integer power, let's say a. And the common ratio can be written as 3 to some other integer power, let's say b. So in this case, a and b are integers. So we know we have a geometric sequence that looks like this. And of course, 3 to the a is x0 because that's the first term. And let's now look at the constraints. Given that the summation from n equals to 0 to 7 of log base 3 of x sub n is 308, and log base 3 of the summation of x sub n is in between 56 and 57, find log base 3 of x sub 14. And let's make sure we distinguish between the summation of the logarithm of the term and the logarithm of the summation of the term. They are not the same thing. Let's start by looking at the first equation. So what's this equation telling us? We are adding a bunch of logarithms of the same base. So in this case, we have log base 3 of x0 plus log base 3 of x1 all the way to plus log base 3 of x sub n. And of course, when we are adding a bunch of logarithms with the same base, that's going to be log base 3 of the product of what was inside. So x0, x1, x2, all the way to xn. And we know that's equal to 308. And that's telling us that x0, x1, x2, x0, x1, x2, all the way to xn is equal to 3 to the 308th power. Since we know the product of this of the terms of the geometric sequence as an exponent with base of 3, maybe it may be easier for us to see what's going on if we use the same representation to rewrite each of the terms, each of the terms of the geometric sequence in terms of the 3 to some integer power. So we know x0 is equal to 3 to the a power x1 is going to be x0 times the common ratio r. So 3 to the a times 3 to the b is going to be 3 to the a plus b. And x2, that's going to be 3 to the a. And in this case, we are going to multiply by the common ratio twice. So that's going to be 3 to the a plus 2b and so on, all the way to x sub n. And what was n in this case? We are going all the way to 7. So let, let's make sure we put 7 instead of n. So we're going all the way to 7. And 7 is going to be 3 to the a plus 7b power. Because when it was x sub 1, we have a plus 1b. x sub 2 was a plus 2b. So x sub 7 is going to be a plus 7b is 3 to the 308th. And we can simplify this one more time. That's 3 to the how many a's? We have 1a attached to 1b, 2b, all the way to 7b. And we have another a. So that's 8 a's. And how many b's? We have 1b plus 2b plus 3b, all the way to plus 7b. And the sum of integers from 1 to 7, that's 7 times 8 over 2, also known as 28. So we know 3 to the power of 8a plus 28b is 3 to the 308. So we know 8a plus 28b is 308, setting the exponents equal to each other, or dividing by 4 on both sides. We get 2a plus 7b is 77. And that's a nice equation to look at. Anything else we know from this equation? Well, we know a and b are integers. So we know a and b are integers. So this is a Diophantine equation. 
And one thing you may say is that A has to be A has to be multiple of 7. And there are multiple ways of deducing that. One way is to take mod 7 of both sides. Because when you take mod 7, 7B is going to go away and 77 is going to go away. Yielding 2A is congruent to 0 mod 7. Or A is congruent to 0 mod 7 because 2 and 7 are relatively prime. Or, or you may rearrange this equation as 2A is 77 minus 7B or 7 times 11 minus B. So we know 2A is a multiple of 7 and because 2 and 7 are relatively prime, the factor of 7 has to come from A. So A has to be a multiple of 7 or A is congruent to 0 mod 7. Whichever way you go, we know A is a multiple of 7, and this is a nice thing to keep in mind. But that's not telling us anything about what exactly the value of A is. In fact, there are infinitely many values of A and B that satisfy this equation. So how do we narrow it down? How do we find which A and which B we really want? Well, we look at this inequality, that this logarithm base 3 of this summation is sandwiched between 56 and 57. But I don't like this logarithm, so let's exponentiate every single side with base of 3. So in this case, log base 3 and 3 are going to cancel out, so we get from this equation, 3 to the 56 is less than or equal to the summation from n equals to 0 to 7 of x sub n is less than or equal to 3 to the 57th power. And we know because x0, x1, x2 forms a geometric sequence, we know this entire thing, this entire thing is a geometric series because we are summing up the terms of a geometric sequence. And we have a nice compact formula to evaluate that. And the formula for the geometric series, if you remember, is the first term times r to the nth minus 1 over r minus 1. And in our case, the first term is 3 to the a and the common ratio is 3 to the b. So let's substitute that right in. So we know the first term is 3 to the a, r is 3 to the b. And how many terms do we have? Well, we're going from 0 to 7, not 1 to 7. So in this case, we have 8 terms. So we get 3 to the a times 3 to the b to the 8 power, or 3 to the 8b power minus 1 over r minus 1, 3 to the b minus 1, is between 3 to the 56 and 3 to the 57. Obviously, trying to find the exact answer using this equation like this is going to be pretty hard. So one thing we can do is to use some approximations. So we want this entire thing to be approximately 3 to the 56. So let's say we want this thing to be around 3 to the 56. And we also see that this entire equation is around 3 to the a times 3 to the 8b over 3 to the b. I'm just ignoring this minus 1 for now because we are approximating. And this is 3 to the a plus 7b. So we know 3 to the a plus 7b is around 3 to the 56, or a plus 7b is about 56. So let's write that down. So we know a plus 7b is around 56. So a plus 7b is around 56. But we already have this equation, and this equation is not an approximation. And we know 2a plus 7b is exactly equal to 77. So let's try taking away this equation from this equation. So 7b is cancel out, and we get a is 21. But wait a bit, we want a to be a multiple of 7. And a equals to 21 is indeed a multiple of 7. So maybe our approximation was so accurate that we actually got the correct answer. But we are going to check it soon enough. But it looks like a equals to 21 may actually be the answer. Anyway, when a is 21, what is the value of b? Well, a plus 7b is 56. So when a is 21, we have 21 plus 7b is 56. And solving this equation, we get b is equal to 5. So it looks like 21, 5 may be the solution to the entire thing. But let's go back up and let's at least try to check it. So we got a equals to 21 and b equals to 5. 
and let's try substituting those values into this formula for geometric series. So when we plug it in, we get 3 to the a, which is 21, times 3 to the 4d minus 1 over 3 to the fifth minus 1. So I'm just plugging these into this formula. And we know that's between 3 to the 56 and 3 to the 57. So we know this is between 3 to the 56 and 3 to the 57. And let's try dividing every single side by 3 to the 21. And when we do that, we get 3 to the 35 is less than or equal to 3 to the 40th minus 1 over 3 to the 5th minus 1 is less than or equal to 3 to the 36. I'm dividing every single side by 3 to the 21. So we have this equation, and is this equation true? It looks like it. Why? Because 3 to the 40 minus 1 over 3 to the 5th minus 1 is equal to 3 to the 35 plus 3 to the 30 plus 3 to the 25 all the way to plus 1. And this is obviously larger than 3 to the 35. So we have the first inequality justified. And also realize that 3 to the 36 is 3 times 3 to the 35, while 3 to the 30 is smaller than 3 to the 35 by factor of 3 to the fifth or by a factor of 243. So this thing, so the terms that we're adding up is much smaller than 3 to the 35 and we only have around 7 of them. So it's pretty safe to say that 3 to the 36, which is 3 times this thing, is going to be larger than this entire expression. So we have the second inequality as well. So it looks like a equals to 21 and b equals to 5 gets us the solution. And what do we know? We want to find log base 3 of x sub 14. And to get to x sub 14, we are going to start with the first term, 3 to the a, and we are going to multiply by the common ratio 14 times because we are going from 0 to 14. So we want to multiply by 3 to the 14b, and we know a is 21, and we know b is 5, so we have 14 times 5, or 70, so we know that's 70. So we have 3 to the 91st power. So when we take logarithm base 3 of that, we are going to get our final answer of 91. And because it's Amy, I'm going to write it as 091. And we are done.